Hi, my name is Paul. Today I'm going to make slab steak. That's little cheese steaks about this big. Actually, it's just steak. You put the cheese on yourself or whatever you want to put on it. Anyway, they're about this big, and uh, they're frozen solid. You put them in a you put them in a frying pan for about two and a half minutes, and they come out fairly nice, as you'll see in the video. Anyway, let's get started. So, what are some of the things I need? Steak rolls. Cooking spray. Slab steak, otherwise known as frozen sliced steak. Since I'm going to have two steak rolls, I need four pieces. Now, you could use more, but I found four pieces works about right. When I call this slab steak, I'm not kidding. One, two, three, four. Cheese. Since I want these sandwiches to be relatively rich, I'm going to use two pieces of cheese on each sandwich. So I need four pieces of cheese. One, two, three, four. A pan with which to cook the steaks. A spatula turn the steak meat over and a plate to put the sandwiches on once they're completed cooking. First I'll turn the heat on about medium which it well uh, up uh, high medium or not high but just between high and medium. Put the pan on spray the pan uh, I guess I should shake it up first because it's supposed to cause a spray. It's not supposed to really be ooey like that. Ooey, gooey, however you want to put it. I don't know if that's a technical term or not. Like, what's the, what was the phrase I used in the one? Smoosh? When I put a smoosh of butter on the pan for my... What was it I was cooking? The strami sandwich, I think. Or was it a cheeseburger? I don't remember. But anyway. Anyway, if you get too much on there, it gets kind of uh, gooey or ooey. Just like if you put a little bit of butter, it's a smoosh. Now, this is probably hot enough. I can go put the buns on there. And again, to remind you, under normal circumstances, I'd be running the fan in the kitchen. But if I run the fan in the kitchen, you can't hear me. Anyway, I'm going to toast this. I'm going to do one at a time because it's just the pan isn't big enough to do two of them. So I'm going to do that for maybe 30 seconds. And as you can see, the buns have become a little bit toasted on the bottom, which is fine. I don't want them really, really toasted. I just want, you know, a little bit of toast. A little bit of toast will make it taste better eventually. A little bit of toast. I don't want to think too much. I'll get sued for copyright infringement. Same thing. I'll probably do another 30 seconds on the inside. The insides will be a little bit more toasty because it's a flatter surface than the outside of the bun. And I can see this is steaming or smoking a little, so it's time to remove that. Yeah, just about right. I'll focus in on that. So you can see how it looks. Turn it down a bit. Since it's smoking a bit more than it should, I'm going to put a little more spray on it. Same thing again. Put the bread on the top, top and bottom first, then we'll do the inside in about 30 seconds. That might toast it a little bit more, but it's not too bad. Again, 
I want it to be a little bit toasty, which means it'll be a little bit crunchy, but not really, really crunchy. Just enough to give it a slight edge. And you can see it's done at least one of them part way, so it's it's good enough. Again, just a little bit toasted. Now this pan is nice and hot. I can see the steam coming off of it. So now I'm going to start with the first piece of steak. The problem with this stuff is that once you once you take it out of the freezer, it starts to thaw, and then it turns into AT and T in the 1980s. It starts to break up. The instructions say to cook this for about one minute on the first side, then turn it over for about 15 seconds. What I watch for is, I don't know if you can see it, it starts out pink, and as it cooks it starts to turn gray, or brown, depending on what your thought of the color is. But I'm going to do exactly what it says, I'm going to cook it for about one minute, then I'm going to turn it over for about 15-20 seconds. Now the first piece will be scooped onto the first cheese bun. You can see why I'm putting two on there because one is not going to be enough. This is number two. Now in case you think I'm kidding about how loud the fan is, I'm going to turn it on for a moment so you can hear. I'm just going to count to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Or let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Four. Now you see why it's so loud. second piece goes on the first sandwich. Piece number three. Number four. And again, the pan full of grease. I don't know if you can see it there, it gets poured into the trash. It's interesting that now the water company, WSSC, here in the Washington, D.C. suburbs is saying for people to can the grease, don't pour it down the sink because it clogs up the drains and clogs up the sewers. So even the water company is putting out ads telling people not to pour grease down the sink. Now I'm going to put cheese on the sandwiches. Now, normally I might grill the cheese with the meat, but this meat is so thin that it would probably have problems. So I'm going to put two pieces on each one so it overlaps a little. Number two, you can use any kind of cheese you like. I happen to like Munster. I also like white American and yellow American. I've used both kinds. I want them to overlap just a bit so the cheese will melt in the middle. Now what I'm going to do is pull the sandwiches away from each other so they don't intermingle then now this cheese is obviously too cold because I took it out of the fridge I didn't bother to cook it so I'm gonna fold the two sandwiches over and I'm gonna put them in the microwave I'm going to do 45 seconds roughly, a little bit more than half a minute, less than a full minute. 
because I want the cheese to melt. I don't want to um, but I have the sandwiches boiling either. I mean there's nothing wrong with melting the cheese on the stove. It's just that it's easier to do it this way. Oh yes! Now, if the cheese has melted nicely over the sandwiches. So anyway, here I have the sandwich. And I'm going to show the other camera how it looks. Here we have one of the sandwiches I just cooked. Now I'm going to see how it tastes. Mmm. It's very good. The bread is... I'm not going to talk with my mouth full. The bread is nicely toasted. The meat is well cooked. The cheese has melted. Not really, really melted. Like not a pool. But it has softened. It's all warm. Mozzarella style. Mm-hmm. It's very good. It's very tasty. And it ain't it isn't that hard to do. It doesn't take that long. Anyway, I'm gonna finish my sandwich. In the meantime, my name is Paul. Thank you for watching.